Hi everyone, this is Piotr Kieszkowski from the Aquarium Television Definite Aquascape TV and this is the second part of my report from Zoo Botanica 2011 fair organized in the city of Wrocław in Poland. This is the entrance to the fair, really crowded place because during three days the fair was visited by about 15,000 visitors. This is hall number one where booths of aquarium companies and fish keepers clubs were located. And in this part of my report I will show aquariums displayed on the right side of the hall number one. We can see this part of the hall right now. We start from the booth of one of the Polish forums about shrimps called Krewetki w Aquarium.pl. First, the attention of visitors was attracted by this small cube displayed on a high wooden cabinet. Inside there was a shoal of small and very active Rasboras, Boraras are of Dalmoites. Of course there were also shrimps in this aquarium, no Caridina heteropoda of the yellow variety. Really nice small layout with clump of Eleocaris in the middle between the rocks. And another nice tank here was located just a little bit above the floor on the right side of the booth. The main decoration here were fragments of driftwood overgrown by Taiwan moss. This aquarium was stocked with a whole swarm of very active red cherry shrimps. In the background there were some clumps of microsorum fern and the right side of the aquarium was decorated with driftwood overgrown by Lomariopsis fern. Next to the booth of the forum Krewetki w Aquarium.pl there was the booth of the company Signifer. Most prominent here were two small cubes manufactured by the company Dennerle. The first larger cube was located on the left side next to the wall of the booth. The layout was composed of driftwood, some rocks, microsorum fern and of some phoenix moss. The green color of plants was contrasting with the color of red zebra danios. The second cube, slightly smaller, was located in the center of the booth, now it's visible in the right half of the view. Inside there were shrimps Neocaridina heteropoda of the varieties yellow and red cherry. And now we go to the booth of the company Scalar. Two aquariums were displayed here, both arranged by the company Salon Acropora, dealer of marine aquarium goods. In the center of the booth there was this large bluish illuminated aquarium with the lobster Homarus americanus. For their well-being lobsters require low temperatures, so the aquarium was equipped with a chiller and the water temperature was actually really low, about 12 Celsius degrees. Another aquarium here was a reef tank, located on the left side of the booth. This aquarium was stocked mostly with animals bred and raised in captivity. They were all well adapted to the aquarium conditions and in a very good health. Creatures most easy to spot here were shrimps Lismata debellius, constantly moving all over the tank. They stopped from time to time, but this happened only seldom. These large polyps belong to the Australian hard coral Tuncanopsamia axifuga. And 
This is hard coral Euphilia paradivisa. These long waving tentacles belong to the coral Euphilia glabrescens. And this coral with small violet polyps is the hard coral Stylophora. There was also a small group of clownfish swimming in this aquarium and they were also bred in captivity. New participant of the zoobotanic affair was the Polish Catfish Forum Plecocom.pl. Aquarium arranged by members of the forum was South American Biotope Aquarium, so as you can see it was full of driftwood. Spotting catfish here was not easy, because these fish prefer to hide. For example, have a look at this fragment of driftwood. Would you be able, without my help right now, to see this L52 hiding in shadow underneath the wood? One of the back corners of the aquarium was a hideout for this nice Barian Sistras L142. Another catfish was hiding under the driftwood on the bottom of the aquarium, it was L75 or Pecolcia sabagi. It was quite large but still difficult to see because it adjusted its color to the color of the gravel substrate. And another catfish difficult to see was this small LDA25 or Parotosinclus species Jumbo laying on the bottom. It was not covered by anything but still almost invisible because its color was so well adjusted to the color of the substrate. Probably the only good visible catfish here was this Sterisoma. It was moving from time to time and this was the reason why it could be spotted quite easily. Otherwise it would blend almost completely with this piece of driftwood. Now we are at the booth of the company Aquatech. Altogether Aquatech displayed four aquariums during the Zoobotanica 2011 fair. Two of them were located at the booth itself on the shelves masked by wood. The upper aquarium, illuminated with pinkish reddish light, was stocked with large shoal of neon tetras. There were also discus fish here of the intensively red varieties. The color of the illumination helped to bring out the colors of the fish even more. The lower tank, in contrast, was imitating the rocky, rocky <laughs> biotope of the lake Tanganyika. It was stocked with a group of wild-caught Trophaeus fish. There were also two other aquariums displayed by the company Aquatech, but I will present them in detail in the third part of my report, which will be dedicated to the exhibition of the African cichlids. And now I will show you the most original booth of the Zoobotanica 2011 fair. It is the booth of the Fishkeepers Society of the city of Wrocław. Two very interesting aquariums were displayed here. In a standard 240 liters tank, the society displayed non-standard fish, freshwater pipefish Microphis brachiaras. These original elongated fish appear only seldom in the aquarium trade, so they were very attractive for the visitors. But the main attraction at the booth of the Fishkeepers Society of Wrocław was the second aquarium standing on the left side of the booth. It was this wide and low tank illuminated by a lamp attached to the stand made of bamboo stalks. The stalks were tied to each other by a natural hemp yarn. Now the main highlight, the layout imitated a small part of Asian stream, including the land part. The shore was decorated with various swamp plants and mosses. And there was even a small creek flowing here, and its water was falling into the main bed.
The inside of the aquarium was decorated with fragments of driftwood, with catapunk leaves and with several clumps of microsorum fern. There were four species of animals displayed here, all of them were described in detail in the information plates. There were Asian shrimps, Neocaridina heteropoda, red cherry here, small fighting fish, beta ratilans. There were also red neon gobies and also a shoal of clown rasboras, rasbora calochroma. Uh, these rasboras were actually the most prominent, the most visible species in the aquarium. Underwater there was a true feast for the eyes of more experienced aquarists. The decorations, scattered a little bit randomly, perfectly imitated the real natural habitat of fish. The water was not entirely clear, in any other aquarium it would be a drawback, but here it made the natural effect even stronger. Such a low and wide aquarium provided the fish with a very seldom opportunity. They could swim between the driftwood not only along the longer walls of the aquarium, but also in the direction to and from the viewers. The fish felt really at home here and their behavior seemed to be very natural. One pair of rasboras was staying in a small hideout by the bottom, on the left side, under the leaf of catapunk. It's actually difficult to say if they were male and female, because the aquarium would have to be maintained for a longer time to see if the fish would have spawned. This is the twilight in the aquarium, just a moment before turning the lights off. The fish appearing in the beam of light and disappearing again created an amazing feel of a natural stream lost somewhere in the middle of the primeval tropical forest. And so, this is the end of the second part of my report about Zoobotanica 2011 fur. In the third part I will show aquariums of the exhibition of the African cichlids. And the fourth part will be dedicated to the Open Shrimp Championship. So now, thank you for your attention, this was Piotr Kieszkowski from the Aquarium Television, Definite Aquascape TV.